Today we're going to be looking at a floppy physics rig you can create in Blender, and this is also quick and easy to render without using any cloth sims. If you'd like to follow along using this banana, I'll put this project file for free in the description below. With that being said, let's dive in and create our rig. Now first things first, we're going to need a armature on our banana here that we can attach our physics objects to. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to hit shift add an armature here and we're going to add a single bone. I'm going to switch over into wireframe view so I can see what I'm working on here. I'm going to bring this down to the bottom of the banana or whatever object that you are working on. We're going to switch into edit mode here and bring this down on the Z axis, bring this over a bit, and then I'm going to hit E to extrude and kind of bring this up to the height of the banana here. And then E again and kind of create a head there. Now I'm going to grab this head here and I'm going to hit Alt P and I'm going to clear the parent. Now I'm going to name these. So I'm going to name this start. I'm going to name this body. And I'm going to name this end. Great. Now we have everything here named. And we're going to switch this over to a bendy bone setup. So we'll grab our bone here. We'll come over here to the armature tab. We're going to do viewport display. Display as octahedral. We're going to change to display as B bone. And that will turn everything into a bendy bone. And then what we're going to do is come down here to the bone tab with this body bone selected, twirl down our bendy bones, and let's turn this segment up. You can do it as high as you want. I'm going to try something like 12. Great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to pose mode. So if I press tab and switch to pose mode, Make sure I have the body bone selected. I'm going to come down here to the bone constraints property. And then what we're going to do is do a stretch to constraint. We're going to grab this target here and we're going to target the armature. And then for the bone here, we're going to select the end bone. Now, when we grab this, you can see that the bone is kind of twisting around. Great. Now, what we're going to do is grab this bone here come to the bone properties tab, scroll down to the start and end handle, which will affect how the start and end handle are curving on this bendy bone. We're going to go ahead and change this from automatic to absolute on both of these. Then we're going to change that custom bone to start and end for each of the handles. And you can see here that we're kind of getting this natural deformation here. So now we're gonna go ahead grab everything here, tab into edit mode, make sure all of our bones are selected. And when you come over here, you'll see that you have these different options here, the bone envelope and the bone size. And we can use these to change the size of the bone. So we're gonna go ahead and change the bone envelope tool and grab all those and just drag that so that looks a little bit smaller. Great, now we can see what we're doing a bit better. So we're gonna go ahead, maybe rotate this a bit somewhere around there looks pretty good to me and then we can select everything here and use the search function to apply a rest pose and now this will be our default pose great so now we need to tab back out into object mode we're going to grab our object or banana whatever you're using and then grab our armature with shift click hit Control p and then we're going to do a with automatic weights armature deform and then now if we grab our pose mode, we can see that our banana is kind of bouncing around. Great. So now we have our banana rigged and we're ready to attach this rig to our floppy physics. So I'm just going to tab back out into object mode here, switch into rendered view here. I'm going to go ahead, grab this armature here, click the armature tab and do in front so that we can see it the whole way. And I'm going to go ahead and name these. So this is my nanner rig. Great. And this is our yeah. awesome so now this is all labeled we'll go ahead grab everything here press m to move this to a new collection great and now we have everything in here so we can turn that off so it's out of our way for a moment so now what we're going to do is we're going to use some rigid bodies and some rigid body constraints, but we're only going to use some kind of default cubes. So they'll be really easy and fast to render even on lower end machines. So hopefully you deleted your default cube so we can go ahead and add a new cube back in. And then we'll go ahead and hit Shift D and duplicate that and move that up. Great. Let's go back here, turn back on our banana so we can see what we're doing. And we'll turn on X-ray mode up here and switch over to wireframe view so that we can see. And what we want to do is scale these down to kind of the start and stop of the banana. So we're going to put one on both the start and the end bone. So I'm going to scale this down here and bring this down here to this bone. Perfect. 
And then what we're going to do is grab this one up here and we're going to scale this down so that it's about the size of our end bone there, which is this bone right here. Great, now we have both of those there. So let's go ahead, hit Control A and apply the rotation and scale of both of these cubes. Now let's go ahead and add some physics to these. So we'll grab this rigid body right here and we're going to search and we're going to add active. And then we'll come over here to the physics properties tab and where it says rigid body here, we'll have active and we're gonna change this to animated. And that will allow us to animate this so that it just doesn't fall through space. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab that and add a keyframe there to hold it still. Now we're going to grab this object up here and we're going to again, add an active. And we're going to leave that one not animated. Now we just need to connect these two. So let's go ahead and grab this top box here and this bottom box, and you can go up to Object, Rigid Body, Connect. And that's gonna bring up this little Connect tab here. And you have various options here. It's also going to create this constraint. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to change this one to Generic Spring. And what that's going to do is create a spring between these two rigid bodies. And we can go ahead and name this spring Awesome. And we'll create a new category up here for our constraints and call this constraints and then just move that into there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the spring constraint up here. And if you come down to the physics properties, you'll see that now we have control over some of the physics. And if we come down here to the springs tab, you can see that we can turn on these angular controls. So let's go ahead, turn these on here and leave those on for now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this object here grab this object here and we're going to do connect again you can also just search for connect and then down here for the type we're going to add a point what that's going to do is connect these two by a point so we'll go ahead add point here and drag this up to constraints and we'll hit play and see what we have for now and you can see now that it's kind of starting to work right there perfect so what we're going to do is add a bit of animation to our cube down here so we can see what that looks like so let's go ahead and move that there and then move that back over here and rotate it. And you don't wanna make this too, too fast because it could possibly kind of break the animation or you're gonna to have to crank up the simulation numbers for an accurate result. So, so what we're getting here, we can see that things are kind of starting to move, which is kind of what we want. Great, now what we're going to do is adjust these properties. So we'll come up to the point tab and first, we want to uncheck Disable Collisions. So by default, when you add these constraints, it disables collisions in between the rigid bodies, which is not what we want. If these come all the way within contact of one another, we want them to bounce off each other. So let's go ahead and uncheck that, come down to Spring and uncheck that. That way, these will collide if needed. Now let's go ahead and adjust this. So we don't want this to be quite so loose. So we can adjust the stiffness here and the damping. So the stiffness will be kind of the stiffness of what it is simulating as a spring. And then the damping will kind of apply a slowing effect on how extreme those kind of numbers are that it's getting. That's kind of the uh, non-technical way to explain it. So what we're going to do is bump this up to something like 100. I'm just gonna put that on all those. And then let's turn the damping up to something like one. Great. And then if I go ahead and hit play here, you can see that we're, we're still getting that kind of like motion, but it's a little more subtle, which is uh, kind of more of a realistic motion. Great. Now what we need to do is we need to attach our rig to this. So let's go ahead here, grab our rig, tab into pose mode. We'll grab the start handle here. We'll come down to the bone constraints. We'll add a child of, and then what we're going to do is make this bottom one a child of this first cube. And we can call this rigid start and rigid end to keep things organized. Great. And then we'll come back in here to pose mode. We'll grab this N1, add a child of constraint, and we'll add this to the rigid end cube. Perfect. Now we can see that we have our kind of floppy physics added to the banana. And you can go ahead and adjust those if you want it to be even uh, floppier. You know, we added a kind of lot of stiffness in our spring constraint there. And then lastly, let's go ahead and grab these rigid bodies. Let's move these into a new collection called rigid body. 
And then what we can do with that collection is we can kind of turn off the rendering there so that it's not showing up in our viewport or our final renders. If we go ahead and take a look here, Perfect. So with this type of rig, you can actually kind of let a lot of animation take care of itself. So I recommend using this to animate things like accessories on your character or maybe large chunks of hair or things like backpacks and just have them kind of bouncing around on your character. And then you can just animate the main portion of your character and let Blender kind of calculate a lot of those other animations, hopefully speeding up your pipeline. I'm using this type of workflow in my short film, and I'm actually using a add-on, which I'll link in the description below, that adds some dynamics to bones as well. As usual, thank you for watching. I'm always excited to see what you create from these tutorials, so please tag me in your results at Southern Shoddy. And as usual, my project files will be available on Patreon.